Neil, this puts Tennis Australia in a bit of a tough situation, doesn't it? It's an impossible situation. So what they need to do now is decide how they do it. They have to do something, because you can't celebrate Labor at 50 years. So 69, like that fantastic Grand Slam, then Margaret Court's 1970 Grand Slam. And you can't ignore that because of her personal views. But her personal views are extreme. So it, leave, it will leave Tennis Australia open to protests, online protests. We've seen what can happen when people mobilise. We know that Martina Navratilova, Billie Jean King, players like that are already agitating for the Margaret Court Arena to not be called the Margaret Court Arena. They're trying to get female players to boycott it. Tennis Australia is acutely aware of it. I would just hope that when they make a decision to somehow honour her tennis, not her... Well, why, can't not, they, why can't they separate the two issues? Well, well, why can't we all be mature enough to separate the two issues? Like, I think it's totally Because the juvenile. world's not like that I anymore, know, but, Gal. But let's, but, but I, let's I, be I like know. that. Why do you have to hate so much on things? I mean, I'm not, I'm, not with what she, I'm not with what she says at all. None of us are. Uh, no one is. No one is, but right? Can we not separate and celebrate her tennis career? Like we were talking before, how many titles did she win? I, 24, 24, 24 titles. singles titles. Why can't 11 Australian that? Opens. That's why it's called the Margaret Court Arena. And I'm with you, Gal. I, I think you've got to separate the two. And say, look, Margaret Court's opinions aren't going to change. They would have been the same opinion she had 50 years ago. They're not going to change. We've got, I think Tennis Australia have got to say they're her opinions. They're not necessarily tennis opinions, but she was and, and a fantastic tennis player and gave exactly. this country a name her opinions, of women's tennis. Her opinions don't reflect what she did in tennis. I, 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 I totally ago. agree. I totally agree. I, but this is, this is where I think Tennis Australia understands the movement that can be made against them. I, I'm, just, I'm just talking from Tennis Australia's perspective. Yeah. I think they should honour her. Yeah, I think they're damned if they do or damned if they don't, but I'm not so, I think they have strongly recognised what she's done and they will continue to, but for me, she's actively undermining the values of Tennis Australia. So they've got um, diversity inclusion is one of their biggest values and she's actively going out there, so they have every right not to use her as an ambassador. And I think good on Tennis yeah, Australia. Diversity don't, don't inclusion use include, yeah, diversity and inclusion means you've got to include Margaret Court. But they've recognised all of her, you know, they've still got Margaret Court named after her. They're not pulling that away, but they don't have to celebrate her. They'd she love to. Represent I'm telling them. you, they'd love to if they could. But that, it, it's a it's a very very difficult one. Something will happen. I would like to think, like, like Margaret Court went on the front foot this week. She got herself on the front page of big newspapers around Australia, and then did a full oh, well, it's a bad pun, a full court press of radio, television, everything. She went bang straight out there. If they do honour her in some way, she can't then use it as a platform. Yeah, that, that, and someone should explain that to her, and she shouldn't. She doesn't need that pressure herself. I, I, I think don't... Though, there's a degree. She's put herself under a certain amount of pressure mm. by coming out. Do you think there's a degree of self-indulgence that, she, that she's probably been guilty of this week when women's tennis in this country is on the front page for the right reasons? Ash Barty is going to finish the season as world number one. We're in the Fed, court, Fed Cup final for the first time in 45 in years. In her hometown. In her hometown. You are an athlete. You've been an athlete. You're still an athlete. When an ex-athlete comes up and steals the limelight that, like this, surely there's a level of frustration for people like Ash Barty and Sam Stoza who've had to answer questions all week about this. Yeah, probably. It just distracts from, obviously, the Fed Cup final, which I watched yesterday was terrific. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, yes, there is that certain amount of self-indulgence from Margaret Court in this issue, but there's also... It's the media of today. It, 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 you can bet that Margaret Court is getting phone calls, journalists, reporters, uh, cameras in her face the whole time, and she's occasionally, probably too occasionally, answering those calls. Mm. Well, Chip Legrand, I think, spent a couple of weeks getting to the point of being able to release his story, so it's no surprise that it came out this week. No, and I, look, I'm still on the same bandwagon that Tennis Australia have the, the rights to decide who they want to use as their ambassador, and if they're not wanting to celebrate her but recognise all of her achievements, I think that's the right path forward, in, in my opinion. It's difficult for all sports, though. <laughs> look, I saw one tweet this week, just one example, and Maddie Groves, the Australian Olympian, she won the, two, the silver medal in the 200 butterfly and the 4 by 200 metre freestyle relay in Rio. Top class swimmer, Australian Olympic athlete. And as soon as that story was posted, she put on Twitter, good luck with that, you homophobic, transphobic bigot. Yeah, and, and that's, that's the That's the situation we're in. All right.